Hi, Seamus. What's up, Eric? How, How are you? Doing? <clears throat> I'm all right. Pretty good. I appreciate your support, man. The uh, uh, what is it? The week, two weeks ago, maybe. Yeah, um, I'm I'm boosting you left and right. I feel like this is <laughs> this is like uh, I love it. It's like some some version of therapy. I um, I look yeah. forward to, to these calls. It's therapeutic for all of us. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, no, no doubt. Hi, Jenna. <clears throat> Hi. You're making me calm on camera now. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Medley. We try to get this a little bit interactive here. <laughs> yeah, totally. So uh, all right, we'll, we'll let some folks jump in here so I don't repeat myself too much here. Um, We have the uh, question board set up here, and I'm going to drop a few things in here so folks mm -hmm. can... Uh, Folks can make best use of all this stuff. Apologize for the last minute um, shuffle last week. It was quite, quite the chaotic week, but uh, maybe absence makes the heart grow fonder here. Um, I sent a, uh, I don't know if any of you guys have played with this, but I sent a, uh, a link to my clone or my second brain. Um, and I had, I had a folks... pretty, I had a pretty long conversation with him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, so, I, I saw your good. conversation. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. It's just something I'm experimenting with. Right. Cause you know, we've done a lot of these now for almost two plus months and I've been recording all of them and, and throwing them into YouTube. And, you know, nowadays with you with transcriptions and AI, you don't have to pour through all those videos to get what you're looking for. So what I've done is I've transcribed those videos, um, thrown them into this uh, thing called Delphi, which is basically creating a knowledge base for me uh, around, you know, all our conversations around recruiting. And, you know, and so it gives you a way to, you know, ask, you know, some virtual Eric, these recruiting job search related questions. And again, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this evolves, but I'm, I'm recording all these, um, you know, weekly sessions and hopefully it'll get more intelligent or, or smarter, or at least, you know, try to pull out, uh, you know, what I have might have in my brain as it relates to, you know, some of these recruiting conversations. So, so is, is the knowledge base for that, um, strictly based on these sessions or is it also pulling from the bigger, like GPT universe? Oh, it'll it'll pull from the GPT universe. So if you ask it, why is the sky blue? It'll it'll be able to answer that. But um, but for the most part, it's it's referencing the content of these conversations first and foremost. And then I've trained it, and it's still you know it's not a hundred percent trained, but it, 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 there's a lot of opportunity to refine it. But I've been refining it um with, largely with these recordings. So hi everyone, Sorry. Kayla, Jen, Preston, Mary, Christine. Rajesh, a lot of new faces here. Uh, Sean, hello there. Hello. Um, so we'll just kick this off. I, you know, I, I schedule this once a week. Um, if you, I think most of the folks here are probably with the NSA community, uh, which I have been now for, since, gosh, October. Uh, I ran moderated to uh, job search councils, and I saw that there was a huge need for um, insight into sort of that black box of recruiting, and um, I felt. You know, given my experience in recruiting for the past 10 years, uh, that I could help give back by giving some insight and really shedding a light on on the whole recruiting, uh, interviewing process, um, largely from the perspective of a recruiter and an employer. Um, and so I thought that, uh, well, I found that a, a little bit of information, the right place, right time can go a long way in helping uh, job seekers navigate uh, their search, their interviewing and all that good stuff. So I do this once a week, usually about half an hour, maybe a little bit more than half an hour. We'll see how the engagement goes, but uh, we've been um, we've been doing this now for about two months, two and a half months. And so if it's your first time here, uh, we try to make it pretty, um, pretty casual. I don't really prepare for these things. It's just sort of a ask me anything kind of thing as you would in, a, in an actual coffee with a recruiter. And so um, there is a job board Oh yeah. Okay. Jenna. So, um, Jenna just posted a question here. So there is a job board job. Sorry. 
there is a question board where you can put in your questions. Use this code, 9613H79. Use that code to get into the appropriate uh, question board and feel free to drop any questions there. Or we could just do it the old fashioned way um, by just raising your hand or just blurting it out here. If it gets too crazy, I'll just turn to the job board. Sorry, that's three times now. I'll turn to the question board. Um, and so, yeah, drop your questions in there and uh, and we can go from there. Um, so yeah, drop, drop in any questions. I'm, I see two questions in there now. I'm all, while we're waiting here or while you, while you are all dropping questions or thinking of your burning questions, I'm going to, I'm going to drop in a little, uh, survey questionnaire. Um, if you might be inclined to do this either on this call or in your own time, um, friend of mine is doing a questionnaire uh, about uh, building a product uh, as it relates to recruiting and AI. So um, if you're interested in participating, that would be helpful. Um, okay, let's see. Um, let me pull up that question board. Okay, awesome. I see a bunch of questions in here. Um, so I'll just start going through these. Feel free to upvote them if you want. To give it a little bit more attention here. Testing, is this thing working? Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, let's see. How much AI experience is needed for an AI PM role that you see in the market? Um, so uh, so what I'm seeing, I, I guess there's a few things. AI is, 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 is changing. It's evolving dramatically, right? Um, uh, the role of a PM, for example, or even a designer or whatever may be the case may be, the roles are evolving um, and AI is, is starting to become more, AI skills is start, are starting to become more um, uh, sort of a differentiating factor. Now, depending on the kind of company that you, you're working for, you may, you may be looking at working for, if it's an AI sort of forward company, then... Um, you know, they're going to be much more specific about the kinds of experience that they, that you have, right? Um, but if they're not an AI forward company, um, they may just be looking for, you know, PMs that have a little bit more differentiated experience with respect to AI. And so the ability to use AI, you know, in, in an individual sort of level, individual operational level um, will be important across the board. Uh, to to not only differentiate you from, you know, other folk, you know, other peers or competitors, um, for that same position, but um, for more progressive again AI forward companies, um, that are for example developing AI products, or looking to integrate AI into their existing products, or into their operations, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be almost table stakes for you to get into those kinds of positions, so um. So yeah, things are moving quickly. I mean, I guess as far as recommendations, I would learn to use AI in terms of just your own your own job search operations, you know, using it to refine any artifacts or documents you're creating, LinkedIn, your copy for your LinkedIn profile, your resume. Um, so learning how to prompt is important, but uh, taking to the next level as far as um, uh, using some of these agents to to do to actually do things for you is sort of next level and to the extent that you can speak to that in an interview that'll differentiate differentiate you tremendously there's a whole slew of tools out there you don't have to be a developer to like actually make use of these tools these ai tools um i'll give you one example um i mean most of you have used chat gpt i'm sure and i think probably most of you have created um you know your own custom gpts um, one thing you could start looking at is um, the playground, um, which is uh, sort of uh, it's not it's not it's sort of the next level in terms of like doing things more programmatically um, that you that you might not be able to do as easily in sort of the normal chat GPT interface. You don't need to know how to use code, but it allows you to adjust things like temperature uh, of a in, of a prompt and things like that. Another thing you might look at is um, Claude for Sheets, 
And so Cloud for Sheets is a way that you can take spreadsheets, um, Google Sheets, for example, and um, actually it, it works for Go it works with Google Sheets. I don't know if it works with um, Excel or not, but uh, it works with Google Sheets and about it allows you to um, uh, sort of integrate LLM and prompting capabilities into a spreadsheet. And so, um, so for example, if you have a column full of um, I don't know, different inputs. They could be uh, different cities, right? Different cities across the US. And if you're prompting, if your prompt is, hey, give me the best sushi restaurant in the city or something like that, you can have that prompt um, uh, take the input and create an output uh, for that entire column, right? So anyway, Claude for Sheets, check it out. It's It's been a game changer for me. Because you could do things at scale. It doesn't require any coding or anything like that. But anyway, I sort of digress from the question. Um, let's see. Okay. So uh, one, one thing here is that I try to balance sort of going deeper versus going broad because I want to sort of find that balance because, uh, you know, we're only scheduling half hour or so here. So if there are any questions here that are that are important try to upvote them so we can get more attention to them because I don't know how many questions we can answer in a given session here. Um, let's see. So do you, oh, there's a question here from Jenna, learned, supervised, or unsupervised learning AI? So, I mean. That's, again, that's what I'm suggesting to learn the fundamentals of AI and beyond just like learning generative AI, like start from the fundamentals. Like, do you know what labeled data is versus unlabeled data? Do you know, standard use cases that have been around for a while, you know, like Netflix recommendation engines, there's pretty solid use cases around like unsupervised learning at that regard. So I would, I would expand from generative AI. Yeah. I mean, generative AI is, is all the crazy these days, but you know, AI has been around for a long time in the form of machine learning, you know, as you say, Jenna. And so, um, and again, if you haven't touched a lot of this stuff, uh, I would start using it experimenting with it and using it within the context of your own job search, especially if you're not uh, working full-time and your full-time job right now is your job search, um, you know, to the extent that you could start implementing some of this stuff in your own search with it, you know, uh, it would be really helpful. It'll help you come up to speed much more quickly. Um, is this a tool you just mentioned, Leo? So what is that? Uh, yes, exactly. That is Claude for Sheets. Okay, let me go back here. Uh, do you read each application that comes in or do many get ignored? Right now, it's it's kind of an interesting time because uh, there's an abundance of great talent out there. And, uh, you know, when a job gets posted, that job it gets overwhelmed, usually gets overwhelmed with a bunch of inbound applications. Um, you combine that with a lot of companies slimming down their, recruit their internal recruiting teams. And so you have a sort of this perfect storm of many applications not getting, not even getting looked at. Unfortunately, I hate to say that, but that's the reality. And so uh, you really have to uh, try to make your resume stand out, and you can't rely on the front door. Um, so apply, but don't rely on that as sort of the only channel to get uh, you know to really land an interview. You got to go to the back door, or the side door, develop relationships with recruiters, with hiring managers directly. Um, and, you know, see if you can tap into that sort of latent job market. There's a lot of jobs that the, the hiring manager and the teams are, you know, they're actively looking to fill those positions even before a job description is even posted. So by the time uh, a job description is posted, um, you know, uh, there's what I'm saying is there's a lot of opportunity to get, to try to tap into that latent job, uh, sort of that job market. So hope that helps. Um, let's see, what do recruiters scan for from LinkedIn, scan for in LinkedIn applications? So generally speaking, I mean, it's kind of a broad question. Uh, what I look for, and I can speak for what I look for in, in a, in a, in, in a application or a resume, uh, most of the companies that I've hired for are, um, growth companies or startups, mostly in tech. And what we look for typically are high potentials. Right, and any leading indicators of high potentials. So we tend to hire less for tend to hire less for skills, and I mean there has to be sort of a table stakes threshold for minimum skills, 
but we tend we tend to look for or prioritize for um, is uh, indicators of high potential. So people that have had sort of title progression, um, folks that have uh, maybe a bit accelerated in terms of um, kind of the scope that they've they've uh, taken on in, in their positions. Um, we tend to look for diversity of experience. Um, and again, it depends on the kind of client that um, that we're doing a search for, right? Um, but generally speaking, that's what we look for. We, we, we tend to optimize for folks that are in the same city, right? So you don't have to deal with the whole, you know, trying to get them to move and, and relocate and all that. Um, we tend to look for uh, cultural markers. So uh, if someone is coming from a, uh, a series of companies that are smaller or more startup-ish, right? We would, assuming that I'm hiring for a startup, I would prioritize for that versus someone coming from, you know, a string of companies for the past 10 years that are much more established, right? So we look for cultural markers like that. Um, we look for accomplishments, right? Um, we look for accomplishments and the, the easier you can make it for the reader, the recruiter, the hiring manager to zero in on what you've produced concretely um, without having to sift through a bunch of superlatives and, and this and that, it makes it easier for a recruiter and a hiring manager to read. So I hope that helps. Um, let's see, anything here in the... How do you upvote? Uh, good question. I think you just click it. Can you click on the star? I thought there was an easy way to do that. Sorry, I'm in the admin view, so um, there should be an easy way to do that in the the non-admin view. Yeah, anyone... I just clicked on a star and it added one. Okay, to yeah, one there of you the go. cards. So yeah, are click you on, on a Mac or a PC? I wonder if there's a difference. I'm on a PC. It's not, it's not doing anything for me. Um. <laughs> It shouldn't matter because uh, it's a browser-based thing, um, and it's not a really high-end thing. I don't pay for this thing; it's free. So, um, yeah, if you try clicking on the uh, the star, hopefully that'll work. Um, let's see. Are there some best practices for trying to get coffee chats with recruiters and hiring managers? Uh, do people even check their LinkedIn inboxes? You know what? LinkedIn is kind of crazy these days. There's just so many folks that are marketing and 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 and, and spamming and pitching. So, um, you know, doing a connection request might get buried in someone's LinkedIn inbox. Uh, what I would recommend as sort of a best practice is engaging with, um, you know, these folks' content. So if, um, you know, if a hiring manager or a uh, recruiter is posting content or engaging with content, you could see that through their profile. I would start to engage with their content, meaning like it, um, add a meaningful, thoughtful comment to the conversation and they'll start to see you, um, they'll start to see you uh, and sort of recognize your name. Do that a little bit and it'll warm them up and then you can, um, you know, do a connection request. And, um, you know, sometimes things get buried in LinkedIn inboxes. That's just the case. But a lot of recruiters do spend a lot of time in LinkedIn. And so um, engaging with content, we found that to be a really, uh, effective strategy. Hey, Eric, uh, I know yeah. there's ways to look up people's email address, like work email addresses too. Is that, is that a welcome practice to, to send up somebody like a direct email as well? Um, you know, recruiters get a lot of emails, right? <laughs> we, we, we live in, we live in our inbox. We live in our, uh, LinkedIn, um, inbox and LinkedIn, uh, in LinkedIn in general, Depending on the kind of recruiter you might be trying to engage, um, if they're an external recruiter, they mm -hmm. might even have multiple inboxes for, you know, like one for each client, right? They might be working on multiple recs for multiple clients. Uh, if they're an in-house recruiter, uh, chances are they don't, you know, they're only dealing with their own company. So one inbox pretty much. But, um, you know, is it a welcome sort of avenue? Um, if you do it tactfully, it can be, you know, but if you're just emailing, hey, Steve, can you get me a job? It's mm -hmm. probably going to be a kind of, it'll probably work against you, right? And so um, a multi-pronged approach, right? Engage with their content. If you 
have a way because you're savvy enough to find their email or to do uh, sort of deduce their email. Um, I would say go for it, but but make it thoughtful and tactful, right? Otherwise, you're not going to get any engagement, and, and it could work against you, right? So, yeah, like I, I've been sending emails with um, kind of like, hey, um, here's sort of a, a highlight, like I don't know, three to five bullet points or something, and you know, would love to have a a conversation, see if it's a good fit or something. Is that? I mean, obviously, that's just very high level, but is that something that? is i don't know because i haven't been getting any responses and i know that you know kind of like you said there's an abundance of talent so i'm sure that my approach is not novel but <laughs> yeah so i mean a lot of what i'll share with you guys is just kind of my own experience and i'm just one person right as a recruiter but um you know folks have uh, in the past gotten on my radar by engaging with my content um and you got i mean you have to align incentives right if you think about what a recruiter or a hiring manager is, um, you know, interested in or incentivized by, right? As a recruiter, what I'm incentivized by is connecting with the right talent, right? And so part of the challenge is like, how do I do that, right? And part of what interests me as a recruiter is getting a platform, uh, a platform or access to honeypots of talent. And to the extent that you could do that, um, you know, so for example, if they, yeah, I guess it's just a random example. If they're doing multiple searches and one of the searches is for, I don't know, a senior designer, right? And you know a senior designer, make the introduction, right? And you know, strong senior designer, right? Not just any senior designer, right? Um, make the make the introduction, right? And so those are things that are kind of valuable. Um, and you just do a few of those things and it sort of greases the skids for, you know, for 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 a recruiter or a hiring manager putting their guard down, right? Because they get they get a lot of emails like, Hey, can I have 20 minutes of your time? Can I buy you a coffee? Right. That's why <laughs> I get that a lot too. And so that, so that's why I'm doing this on a weekly basis. Right. Cause I can do it at scale. You know, I can, there's, I don't know, 20 folks on here. Right. And I can hopefully, um, you know, share, you know, answer questions and, and more people can benefit from it. But for me to do a coffee one off, even if you're in the same city, it's hard for me to do that. Right. Um, so hope, hope that helps Tim. Yeah, that's helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah, do you read? Okay, let's see. Where am I? Um, would you video or audio message? What is that? Be welcomed and get more attention? Sorry, if instead of just sending an email, what if we sent a video or a audio um, message instead? Does that make any difference at all? Is, does that stand well, out? Here's the thing. nobody's do, uh, it's, Nobody does that. So it would differentiate you, right? But again, it's sort of like, okay, um, what is your message, right? If your message is in video or audio saying, hey, get me a job, dude, then um, it's going to work against you, right? So the message has to be, um, you know, in good faith, and it has to be, um, you know, leading with something that the, the person might be interested in, right? And so, um, but yeah, just to give you some feedback, like nobody does this. Right. I made a recommendation. I've made this recommendation before, putting a little QR code on your resume where um, it, it it takes that person, it takes that reader, they take their phone out, they hit that QR code and it drops them into a video of you, right? Maybe a short one minute, 30 second video saying, hey, this is me, this is what I do, um, you know, would love to chat or whatever, right? Just something to give them, because nobody does that, right? And so if you're looking at 10, res you know, 100 resumes, and you see this little QR code. Oh, this is interesting. Let me see what's going on over here, right? And I guarantee you, I mean, there's 20 people on this call. Maybe one person does this, maybe, right? Um, so I, there was a guy that that was in my um, JSC months ago, and um, I only found out this later. We had this idea. We, he and I were bouncing this idea back and forth, and then he actually did it, and um, and you know he had me test it out, and I thought it was really cool. One video was a video that. You know, he did it in sort of the style. It wasn't high production or anything, but he did it in the style of like, I don't know if you guys remember, and maybe I'm dating myself here, but like in the, the 80s, those sitcoms, those cheesy family sitcoms. So he did something like that, sort of showcasing his home and his family and this and that. It was nothing like professional in the sense that, oh, you know, this is what I do, you know, as an occupation or this is my experience. That was one video. It was like 30 seconds or, or a minute. The other video was a video that he produced that sort of reflected the culture 
that he built at his company, at his previous company. And so it was a little bit more corporate, but it was still sort of lighthearted and short. So he had those two videos on there. And I only found out later that when he ended up leaving the JSC and he ended up getting his job, it was because of that. That got him the attention and that was sort of the differentiator. And I know that's just one story and one anecdote, but if you look at way, different ways that you can, you know, just separate yourself from what other people are doing, you know, a lot, a lot of times people won't do it because they're uncomfortable being in front of the camera, which I understand, right? Um, you got to play to your strengths, but, um, you know, you got to think about what, what could differentiate you apart from the pack, right? Um, let's see. So any insights... Any insights into how recruiters use LinkedIn and what parts of our profile we should optimize, internal and external recruiters? So I use I use LinkedIn profiles. So there's two there's two pieces, right? When I'm sourcing, meaning I have to go and build a list of prospective candidates or leads. Um, I have I have a job description. I have a deep understanding of what we're looking for, and I go to LinkedIn. I do like a Boolean query. I, I set some filters and then I, I, I create my own lists and I go through those lists and then I start reaching out to those folks uh, that I want to engage, right? That, that we, we refer to that as sourcing. When I get a bunch of inbound from a job a posting, you know, I'll look through the resumes and the resumes that I think are interesting or, you know, a, a good fit. I very quickly, after I look at that resume, I go to LinkedIn. And so what I'm looking for on LinkedIn is more of a holistic view of the person uh, versus what my expectations for a resume are. The resume is um, much more focused on, um, it's sort of a brochure, right? It's much more focused and tailored for the particular job uh, position that the person is applying for. Whereas the LinkedIn profile is, it's a bit more holistic about the person, right? Uh, not to say you can't or shouldn't um, tailor your LinkedIn profile um, but it won't be hyper personalized. I mean, it's just it's hard to maintain, right? You wouldn't hyper personalize your LinkedIn profile for each job that you're applying to, right? You'd probably uh, hyper personalize it for for now in the particular position that you're you're looking for. So, you know, uh, to use the NSA lingo, like your candidate market fit statement, um, your LinkedIn profile should be somewhat um, oriented toward your link, your candidate market fit statement. Um, and so, so yeah, let's see. So what, what other parts of our profile should we optimize? I like to say that the, the about section should be optimized. It should contain your candidate market fit statement. And I, I would, I would like to say that it also should, it also should include some marquee, uh, career accomplishments, um, that, and, and that makes it really easy to maintain and it makes it sort of it sucks, it sucks me in as far as um, wanting to read more of your LinkedIn profile. So that's one thing that I would, I would try to optimize. I mean, there's a whole slew of other things. I mean, have, you know, ha have a professional looking photo, the real estate on the, the banner image is something that a lot of folks don't maximize. A lot of times folks just have an image there. There's a lot of things you could do use Canva uh, where you could put text in there. And so things you can put in there, you know, relate to your CM, uh, your candidate market fit statement, Right. And so uh, you can get really creative there in terms of how you sort of project that. Um, hopefully that helps. We're almost at the bottom of the, the hour here. Um, yeah. Jen, get your skills endorsed testimonials. Yeah. Yeah. Make, you got to make sure that your LinkedIn profile is, is sort of refined, right? You want to spend some time and all too often I see bare, LinkedIn profiles, there's like no accomplishments there, you know, there's barely any statement of what the person has done, you know, at a given company. And so I, I don't imagine that your, your LinkedIn profiles look like that, but, um, but yeah, testimonials is something that we look at more. Usually I look at them usually more when, once a person has progressed a little bit further, uh, through the interview process, uh, or the consideration process. So, um, let me see, I'm just looking through some of the questions here. Um, let's see. Uh, I've been able to score interviews from cold applications. Am I just really good at writing resumes or do you think it could be a demand supply thing? 
I'm a data product manager. This is my question. <laughs> because I'm the one, like in my JC, I completely go against the grain of what everyone's been saying. It's like, yeah, you should network. And I'm like, I'm too lazy. Like I want to move quick. So <laughs> I've applied to maybe a little under 200. I probably didn't need to apply to as many of those jobs, but like I'm now juggling like at least five to six opportunities all from cold application for the most part. So I'm just curious. And as I tell people, I don't think it's because I'm any, you know, more special or, you know, skilled, but I mean, I'm curious if it's more of like a supply demand thing that some folks will be able to score jobs from cold apply with little effort versus other folks where it's just so oversubscribed that they have to use these, these other methods. Um, Yeah. Obviously I'm sure there's a distribution of, of, um, varying supply and demand and, and skills that are more in demand versus others. So that, that might be at play, but I'm, I'm curious what your response rate is in terms of, you know, out of 200 applications, uh, uh, just so folks here. Over 6%, understand. I would say roughly. 6%. Okay. Yeah. Which makes me sometimes think like, maybe I should just be like a volunteer branding person, like look at people's profiles, look at the resumes. I can tell you if I can't get a sense of what you do. Cause I think a lot of people from what I see, and I can't really, I can't understand their branding story. They're trying to be so many different yeah. things. My role is very niche. So I think it's very, I make it very easy for people to understand what I do. And it's funny, like I have such a brand as being a data product manager now that so many people from the JSC now just, they throw me jobs. They're like, oh, you're the data PM. Here's a data PM role. So like my branding is super strong. So I feel like yeah. your what branding- you, asking, what, do you, what do you attribute that to? <laughs> Um, well, okay. I've been like a product management interview hacker since 2018 from product gym. So I just know a lot of tricks of the trade. I've learned how to create a resume based off of tried and true sort of whatever learnings that that program has, um, like discovered. So I kind of follow them. I don't know, like even in my about me section, I find a lot of people's about me sections. I don't know. They, they're like stuff with a lot of keywords, but I don't get a sense of who they are as a PM. Like I really put down in my my about me section like my philosophy on things it's like why do i do this yeah which i think can help distinguish you um from other folks i think i'm drawn to people who appear to be thought leaders you're going to bring new fresh ideas so i think when you are thinking about your branding don't just be like yeah i'm a b2b SaaS product manager with seven years of experience in all these different industries it's like okay so what, like, what would it have you contributed, like, on a thought leadership perspective? Like, what yeah. fresh new ideas are you going to bring? Like, there's a reason why all these thought leaders get all this attention because they have what seemingly, I guess, unique ideas, maybe not so much, but they know how to package in a way where it's, it seems interesting. So, yeah, I think it's trying to, you got to figure out, like, what are your superpowers? Yeah. Where are the interesting intersections of your job that's going to make you look like a unicorn to someone? So maybe I've done a decent job of that. I don't know. Yeah, I, I love it. Um, and I think uh, maybe it was Seamus that asked if you'd be open to sharing your your resume. Um, it's, and it's nothing even amazing. I don't yeah. know. Like That's why the thing is, I don't know if it's a supply demand thing. But I do think the way I write my resume, I write it for human consumption that someone who may not be so familiar with data PMing can maybe grasp what I've done. Maybe yeah, not, but yeah. yeah, I can share my well, resume with you. And, and, and to your point, and if you want to share it with me, I can share it with others or you could just pop it Ugh, into the, the chat I don't here. Know, maybe one person at a time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, I, but, but I don't know if that's the thing though. Right. But like also with LinkedIn, you know, I have a lot of endorsed door skills. I don't know if that's a thing. It's like, I, I haven't asked recruiters, like, why did you pick me? Like, maybe it is keyword searches, you know? Yeah. Like even my LinkedIn headline, I love my LinkedIn headline. I call myself a data wrangling product manager. Yeah. <laughs> like it already has some personality to it. And I say I'm a UX minded builder because data products are often built in isolation of any UX design. So I try to say like, I actually care about building good data products. And then my third part of my header is like, my reason for doing this. It's like, I want to drive strategy, blah, 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 like whatever. There's like some catchphrase that I use beyond just like keyword here, keyword here. And like the keywords just to me, they don't, I don't know if someone as like particular as myself, I look at it and I, I would just gloss over that. I want to be yeah. a little shocked and surprised by your headline a little bit, at least to stand out in this marketplace. Yeah, totally. I mean, I think you're hitting the nail on the head. There's so many different ways that you can write a resume mm-hmm. and writing it for the person 
uh, versus writing it for an ATS or some sort of algorithm, yeah. right? I mean, that's a strategic decision that you have to make. Uh, yeah. But also like making sure that you're hyper focused with respect to, yeah, you know, what do you do, right? What are you good at? Because I, I I face the same issues when I'm reading a resume. Like I don't I don't know what a person is interested in, and you know, mm -hmm. again going through that whole practice of the candidate market fit statement is is a is a really good start of doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I had more time, I truthfully would help people with their branding. Cause I think it's fun. I, I helped someone with it. I was pretty blunt with him. I said, your profile puts me to sleep. You gotta do better. And he, he listened to me and he got a lot better at his profile. Yeah. And like a month later, he got a job. I can't contribute it to myself, but it got <laughs> him thinking about like his rebranding. So I was yeah. super happy when I heard that. Yeah. Yeah. And AB test it, right? Like, I mean, yeah, a lot absolutely. of people are, are with yeah. the JSC and, and, you know, and like Miranda, I'm sorry, I'm like taking over our here, but like what I've also done that's helpful is you can test drive strategies on, on um, jobs you don't actually really want. So if you're like, hey, I'm going to test this uh. thing, this is how I hack away at the system. Start with jobs you don't really care about. You can do that to even get better at interviewing. If let's say you're like, oh, I hate interviewing, but you want to get good at it. You work on jobs that are not you don't want to work, you know, there. And you can also test different tactics on companies you don't really want to work for and kind of A-B test it to Eric's point. So that's how I've become more comfortable just hacking away at this process. Ooh, I love the A-B testing idea. Thank you It's so, so much. much fun. It makes the process <laughs> so much more fun. All right. Um, I guess one last plug that I'll make and I'll send this, y'all get uh, sort of a follow-up email, but there's this little... Uh, uh, I don't know even what to call it, an avatar, a clone, a second brain um, bot that I've trained on all these conversations and they'll continue to get more refined over time. But I'll just drop it here um, into the uh, the chat. Uh, uh, it'll, it'll, you'll get it in the email as well, but um, uh, I would love it if you guys could, could check it out. Let me know what you think. Have a conversation with it. It's supposed to speak in my voice and again, be trained on sort of what I would answer uh, with respect to some of these questions that you all, you all have. So anyway, I do this every week. I uh, hope to see you next Thursday. Uh, reach out if I can help with anything. And uh, thank you all. I will thank talk you. to you soon. Thanks. Goodbye.